Hello and welcome to Megawatt, where each week we give you the lowdown on the latest piece of kit from the world of technology and gadgets. This week we've come down to London's XL and to the boat show to find out what's going to be getting you excited when you head to the water later this year. Stay tuned. I'm sitting on a two million pound sailboat that basically allows me to control it with, well, four buttons. All I have to do is press the mainsail furling and the whole thing springs into action. Now we're inside, unfortunately, so you can't see this massive sail moving, but pretty much this could be crewed by one man. They recommend two so the other guy can have a rest from, well, pressing buttons. But that's not it. For two million pounds, you don't just get a sailboat. You got a whole lot of mod cons too, and we're going to have a quick tour to show you what you get. So, starting up here, it's your little cabin area for seating, for having dinner. You get fold up tables, you get little comfort lights at the bottom, there's a light in the boom, it's all very nice. And then it's even better when you realise that open this up and it's a fridge. I mean, where else are you going to keep your champagne cool? Come on, people. So, we go down into the cabin, and that's where it really gets fun. So coming down into the main deck, the main area, we have the living quarters, which is your main big lounge. It's really light. There's loads of uh, windows everywhere. Then we've got the kitchen. Now this is pretty cool. I like cooking, but normally when you go into a sailboat, certainly a yacht, it's, the kitchens are useless. The galleys are useless. Here, however, we have all the mod cons. Dishwasher. There's a massive freezer, so you can even have your Finder's crispy pancakes. It's a microwave, obviously. We've got a fridge. There's another store covered fridge in here, which is pretty cool, probably for your bottles of champagne, obviously. There's a pop-up TV, 32-inch LCD screen. And then back here we've got, there's two single bunk beds that can be folded into a double. There's also another double. They've both got en suite. It's all very exciting. And then last but not least for the tech gadgets, there's even a chance for you to do your washing if you want to stay clean. Basically, they tell us at Oyster that you can, well, be self-sufficient if you can catch fish. If you can catch fish, then you could just live at sea. You never have to come home, which is pretty cool. Now, the whole master control system is all done through navigation, all charts and all the other stuff. That's your main area here. You've got the sat-nav, you've got the touchscreen TVs for maps and things like that. All very groovy, big panel switches to keep it real. There's a engine in here which obviously you wouldn't see normally but they've made it see-through so we can show you there's a another bunk bed in here and then of course the master bedroom which all seems very nice sony flat screen tv you could race around the world in this on your own chilling like a bachelor it'd be pretty cool all remembering just to press that one single button to run everything i think i quite like it a German company called Torquedo is hoping to give you an eco-friendly option for when you power out and your little dinghy down the river. And this is it. This is the smaller, well, the mid-range version, an electric-powered outboard motor. Now, it's all very simple. The battery is lithium magnesium. It gives you six hours of charge on slow, 45 minutes if you're looking to burn out and you know just get there quickly all you have to do is plug it on like so so what's it like well this little puppy is 11 and a half kilos in weight and it's comparable to a two stroke three and a half horsepower engine but as you'll soon notice when i turn it on it's electric so it doesn't make any noise so we then stop it now the, also the great thing about this is because it's electric there's no gear motors so you can go backwards without having to change around the motor. The great thing as well is that it comes with a, a backpack because, wait for this, you can fold it up and take it with you. So we've got another one here which we're going to show you how to fold in half. So all we have to do is take away the dial at the top, hold that, it then pops out. That then pops there. All of a sudden, we have an incredibly small motor which is able to put into our bag to bugger off home with. And that is the Torquedo outboard motor.
basically, this is a new sport called brushboarding. It's a multi-fitness machine that's very much like well, surfing in the ocean. However, there's no water, so I haven't had to get wet. I can jump on it at a moment's notice, and it works pretty much anywhere. Based in Devon, UK company has created this thing. Well, to get people fit, I'm already out of breath and I've only just done a couple of minutes. The idea is you jump on board, surf to your heart's content, and then jump off, jump off again. And this is an early stage prototype. The plan is to have a much bigger, much higher board so you can actually get some air. And it's pretty cool. If you want to check it out, brush boarding down in Exeter, UK company. Time to get surfing. So you're on your boat, you've got an emergency, you've run out of champagne, you need to grab one of these, the Marine VHF. It basically allows you to talk to the Coast Guard other boats. Excuse me, do you have any more champagne? We seem to be out. Yes, well, the great thing about them normally is that they allow you to keep in touch with other people. The bad thing is that they're not waterproof. Ah, I seem to have a problem. Well, the good thing is, is that this one is waterproof. So when we can get it back, Did could you I... Did it in there? Yeah. It's terrible, isn't it? Could I borrow a paddle? Can that? Well, sort of. Can I borrow... It's all right, just borrow a paddle, it should be... It's gone quite far right. now. Yeah, I'm going to say... See what we can do. So we now need to try and get this back. There we go. Thank you very much. Right. And she's going to get it back. Now, hopefully, it will work. If it doesn't, it's 150 quid. I've got to suddenly fork out. Cunning prowess, the Lee Valley canoeist. That's superb. Thank you very much. So, does it work? Let's hope. We're turning it on. And there you go. Look at that. So, it is waterproof. Yours, for £150. If you're rich and famous or just aspiring to be, then the thing you need is a sun seeker in a port somewhere warm. Well, we've come down to the boat show to find out what the company from Paul has for its 2009 range. Whether you've got 5.6 million or a mouth-watering 14, the company says it has plenty of gadgets and technology to keep any fan of Megawatt happy. Let's go and check them out. So televisions, they're a lovely thing, keep you entertained, but they're also pretty ugly no matter how nice they look. Luckily, Sunseeker has the option for this. We're watching telly, we're lying in bed. We don't really want the telly anymore. We turn it off and watch and learn. And it's as easy as that. Now, we've seen Collider Escape home server system before, but we've never actually seen it on a boat until now, that is. Yes, we're sitting here on the brand new launch boat of Sunseeker, and they've got five clients, so that means you can watch it in five, up to five different rooms. There's six Bang & Olufsen televisions, a funky remote, and they've even got an iPod dock. Who would have thought that a 5.6 million boat would have an iPod dock, but it does. Now, the system's really simple to use. It allows you to select a number of different movies, programs, whatever that you've got sorted on a central server, and then recommends programs to watch as you go. All incredibly easy, all in high def, all good fun. So here in Mission Control of the Sunseeker 38, there's lots of dials, there's lots of buttons. I even get a trackpad in my captain's chair to whiz around the map. It's all pretty cool. What I do like, though, is the screen over there that says daily operation. That basically gives me all the stats and statistics that we need to uh, run your boat. So it gives you speed, knots, uh, distance traveled, all the other usual gubbins that you'd expect. But a really cool feature is that it has an alarm system that as soon as anything goes wrong, automatically sends a message back to Sunseeker in Paul and then they at least can work out what the hell's going wrong. Now, some problems can be fixed, we're told, over the air, just like the McLaren F1 cars, but if not, at least you have some idea of when you dock it into that docking yard to say, hey, it's broken, and this is what it is. So if you've been put in charge of a very large yacht, 30 meters plus, you get to play with a very cool toy. It's a 360 degree rotating video camera that has a massive zoom as well as up and down capabilities. Now what's really useful is, when it comes to it, is it has a night mode. Now unfortunately it's daytime so we can't really see much, but it also has thermal imaging, so when this eventually does 
focus in. You can see the runners are quite clearly quite hot on this cold day. And why would you want this? Well, basically, if you're traveling at the dead of night, you can't see a thing out the window. At least you can refer to this and see that crazy fishing boat about to cross your path. So there you have it. If you've got a couple of million spare, a desire to have some cool kits like the Kaleidoscape or maybe just some Bang & Olsen televisions, looks like you need to put that order on a boat. Of course, I've already ordered two. Well, that's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Why don't you tune in next time for more news, reviews, tips, tricks, opinions, and much more. I'm Stuart Miles. This is Megawatt TV. I think I'm going to go and book that holiday to the Bahamas. See you soon.